In this video series, we're going to demonstrate in a simple project some of the new tools in the modeling workspace of 3D Coat 2021. These include a few of the curve based modeling tools. The objective is to create a base mesh, which we will later send a copy to the sculpt workspace to sculpt the rough and intermediate forms, then add details to finish. In this first video, we're going to start with this swept in generator. But for the sake of new users, I will first show how to set up an image plane. Then we will proceed to create our curves. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to create a completely new scene. File, new. We can go to the poly modeling option. That places me in the modeling workspace. And the first thing I want to do is set up my image reference plane. I can go to the upper right hand corner of the viewport and click on the image reference icon. I can then choose which axis I want it to be facing. I will choose the image for Z axis. I think I'll just use this one. You can flip it here if you like. We can hide all or show hide. If I want to close these helper guides, I can click on close guides. Okay, so now I'm going to go to an orthographic view by going to the cube icon or the five key on the number pad. Let's go to the camera menu and we go to something like a front view. Now I am using a 3D connection device, so that allows me to lock an orthographic view from rotating. I can zoom in, move about, but it prevents me from rotating on any axis. This is where maybe we would want to go ahead and turn our grid placement on. Okay, and we can choose the density. Without a 3D connection device, you can hold down the Alt key and right click and drag in the viewport to zoom in. Now, I want to go to the E panel. I can go to the top of the tool panel here and hover in this area and that brings up the E panel. I have brush draw modes and then I have shape draw modes. The one I want to work with is this closed curve, but I can also just go to the curves menu and we can activate the curves editor. Another important feature relating to the curves tool set is the ability to bring all the curve icons to your cursor by way of a pop-up panel, just like you have with the E panel. For example, whenever I hit the E key, I can bring the E panel to me, move my cursor away and it disappears. Now I can also hit the Q key and that brings all of these icons right to my cursor the same way. Now I really need to emphasize this one point. When you are done creating and editing your curves, it's very important to close this curves editor because with this active, you are effectively in a curves creation or editing mode until you choose a different draw mode. The reason for that is again, 3D Coat is assuming you want to continue editing curves, but some tool functions may not work properly while you are still in curves creation or editing mode. Okay. So your first two icons are very similar to what you might find in other vector based applications like Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw. You'll see an icon for click and edit the entire curve or click and edit points along the curve. Then all of these up till about this point are basic creation icons in one form or another. This one just removes sharp corners. Now this one is very important if you need to manipulate your spline or the points on a spline in 3D space. You have the same transform gizmo that you see in the scope workspace, the retopo workspace, and here in the modeling workspace. Now, the next three icons you have are hard edge, spline and B spline. The spline is just a curve that runs through the point. And then you have B spline, which is a weighted curve, as you can see, therefore it tends to be smoother. These three change point types and have their counterparts in these three creation modes. Again, hard edge, spline and B spline. So you're creating with these and here, you can select points after the fact and change them here. 
Another thing to keep in mind is you can always at any point in time, right click on a point and it cycles between these different modes. Okay. So as I mentioned, you can use one of these creation modes to begin creating a spline. In this case, we want to create one for the topmost boundary, another for the bottom boundary, and then a profile that is swept along those guides. You can also add a second curve if you want. So if the shape changes dramatically along that object, then you could add again a second curve. In this case, we'll work with just one. So what I'll do is starting off, I will click this circle icon and I'll just create one here. Click and drag. You can keep it as an ellipse if you like. I can hold the shift key to constrain it to a perfect circle. Now I will go ahead and come to the regular spline creation mode and I'll start somewhere in the nose region and I'm just going to click and continue to click. I'm not going to worry about the horns at this point because we are going to come back and build those or create those with other tools such as the spine tool and a smart extrude. You can use the freeform mode, but I find that when you're done and you want to go back and edit your curve, you'll see that it leaves a lot of individual points. I'll show here in just a moment. You can always right click and choose curve operations and then simplify curve to which you'll have some options as to how much it will simplify. Okay, I'll hit escape to drop the initial creation of the spline. If I need to go back and make any edits, I want to go to the edit points mode. You can do some editing while you're still in the creation tool, but I find if you want to delete a point, it's best to go into edit points mode. I'll go ahead and stop the video right here and we will pick up in the next one where we will create the second curve guide and generate our mesh. Okay, so stay tuned and thank you for watching.